Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here because anytime Latinos get the opportunity to come and speak, I win. <laughs> because that's what I've been trying to do for the last 20 years. That's been my goal all along. You know, it, it's like the saying goes, when you are at the table, you want to be uh, part of the conversation, you don't want to be part of the menu. So um, Latinos have been part of the menu for too long, and I think um, um, uh, that's one of our problems. Now, I am going to be critical at times of Latinos. If uh, you don't like people criticizing other people, this is definitely not the talk for you, because um, I think, I believe that when you don't bring the issues to the table, you can correct them. You continue to be uh, living in, in ignorance of what's going on or what are the shortcomings that you need to correct so uh, you can move forward. Having said that, I'm going to try to concentrate on or try to link um, where Latinos come from to secularism or the lack of. And um, I'm going to start by um, saying that I don't have a recipe. I don't bring solutions. I just want the conversation to get st started. So who are Latinos? Or who are Hispanics? Some people say this, some people say that. I had some friends from South America to visit me here a few days, a few weeks ago. And you know, we were having dinner and I said, um, do you consider yourself, I mean, do you, if I call you Latina, wh wh what do you think? And one of them like, no, don't call me Latina. I'm not Latina. I'm like, okay. So what about if I call you Hispanic? Ah, okay. So bottom line is, each person has their own preference, but sometimes I take a little bit of an issue when I have people from other walks of life trying to dictate what the definitions for Latino and Hispanics are. And um, I really feel that I'm kind of more qualified than some other people to, to, to say what it is or what it's not, or how close, um, uh, or, or, or whether that is a self-identification way of being part of something. Um, Latinos in the United States have the tendency to um, talk about their country. They, some of us forget that we are part of this country. So my goal with all these talks and going to um, speak in front, of, in front of other people, even in front of Latinos, is to make sure that we are 56 million uh, Hispanics in this country, but I want to have 56 million of U.S. Hispanics, meaning Americans, people that live in this country, that uh, uh, live in this society. Now, my definition of Hispanic. To me, Hispanic Latino is exactly the same. It's a personal preference. I am not going to get angry if you call me Latina or if you call me a Hispanic woman or anything. To me, it's absolutely the same. Um, it's more or less the way the person feels or what they want to be called. Spanish are Europeans. They are neither Latinos and they are not Hispanics. So that is very clear. And I think that I might agree with a lot of other people. Um, and that is regardless of their geography and the language. But trying to agree on what the definition of Latino and Hispanic is, what I would like to do is to move forward and work together to be Americans. So that's something that I try to include in my presentations all the time. Here we have another definition. Some people that Hispanic has to do with countries whose primary language is Spanish. The problem is that not all the countries in Latin America speak Spanish. You have Dutch, you have Portuguese. Go call a Brazilian Hispanic and see what they tell you, okay? Just try it. 
or go call a Caribbean, uh, a person from Jamaica or from, uh, or from um, I don't know, um, any of the Caribbean islands, call them Hispanics and see what happens. So th to me, these definitions are really not relevant. And of course, we are not um, uh, created by uh, people that have more access to what the Latino community is. Again, Spanish are people from Spain. They are Europeans. They are not Latinos. They are not Hispanics. I'm going to repeat that all the time. Um, uh, then we have yet another definition. I found this in, in, in YouTube and I'm going like, what? But okay, I'm not even going to explain it. You can take a look at YouTube. It's a diagram. Somebody came up with this and they say that Brazilians are Latinos and that um, Spanish are Hispanics. Mm, last time I checked, that's not the case, but you know, this is again another sample of all the different definitions for for the same thing and if we have problems coming together on what the definition is imagine how much problems we have to coming together in working together as Latinos or Hispanic um, this term as I said is being constantly defined and I think in the United States, we use it because we're trying to create a common denominator uh, for a group that has, that has many subgroups. Uh, it, it's an attempt to align subcultures and uh, under one huge umbrella so we become a more, or, or we look more homogeneous. Of course, trying to make Hispanic look homogeneous is very difficult because it's, we are a combination of everything. I mean, if you go and check Latinos' DNA, you will find everything and then some. Um, the, the term Latino and Hispanic also tries to bring uh, together the different races and ethnicities within the Latino community. So again, uh, this term is very widely used in the United States, not so much so in um, Latin America or South America or Central America. I just wanted to show you um, what I was mentioning before. The DNA for Latinos is like a smorgasbord of races. I have three individuals here that I got their permission to use. One is mainly European. The other one is mainly uh, black and the other one is mainly Native American. So, you know, that's just three of them. So, you know, as, as you can see, um, you are gonna, f that's what is so difficult to identify a Latino just by looking at them uh, as, it, as it happens in, in, with other races. You know, you sometimes, you might be talking to somebody that is blonde, blue eye, and the guy is from Panama, he doesn't speak English. So, uh, you know, that, that happens all the time. Now, I, I want to give you a brief history on how the conquistadors tie into the religiosity of the Latinos. The conquistadors came to the Americas looking for gold, but besides the gold, they found several Amerindian groups. So, all these groups have different cultures, different taxation kind of deals, these different ways to trade. Everything was different. So these conquistadors were like Trump. Oh, we need to create a destruction here, so I'm the supreme being. So what they did, they um, learned and they strategized to manage the Amer Indians. Uh, by establishing a new colonial order. In that colonial order, social status, honor, and wealth were assigned at birth, and changing su such, uh, such order threatened God's natural order. Okay, so from day one, when the conquistadores came to uh, uh, the Americas, they go like, we need to control these people. Too many, 
too many different cultures, too many different things. What can we do? Okay, so we'll teach him that God says that there is a natural order for everything and that they start embedding that at that point and that's what I call the heavy medallion that we carry even today. That's the mental slavery that we Latinos suffer, um, you know, different than other minorities that have been more physical, but I think Latinos do have this, this problem that was embedded to them from day one, um, in their brains from day one. So when they did that, religion became the unifying factor um, for all these Spanish um, kingdoms where taxes, laws, and cultures were a little bit different. So again, that was how they um, came to find that common denominator. Um, these people, the Spaniards, did such a great job at embedding the idea of God's natural order in the Indians that their descendants, me and all the other Latinos, shy away from challenging religion and other superstitions even today. And that's why I think there is such a religiosity within the Latino community. And you know, there are many uh, opinions out there saying, oh, well, you know, they are becoming less religious, less this, less that, but you know, I am not so sure. What, what I would say is that they are going to church less, but when grandma gets sick, they all participate in the prayer chain, just like 200 years ago. So I don't think that that has changed that much. Um, religion is still no question uh, among most Latinos because the church has remained such a powerful institution in Latin America and you know in the states here because when they attend to church that becomes their central social uh, point many times. Um, being keeping that keeping religion in their lives in our lives um, implies that the order that was imposed then is still current today and that is when it comes to for example women having an inferior uh, place in the family uh, that was all instilled at the beginning um, by the Spaniards. Uh, so now that takes us to Latinos and religion in the, in the US. Like I said you know the Pew Hispanic Center has some numbers out there stating that Latinos are less religious, but but, but you know I, I defer I, I I don't I don't agree with that except for the fact that they don't go to church anymore. I still think that we can do more so the community the Latino community becomes becomes a little bit more secular and uh, and um, leaves their superstitions aside. We Latinos are religious hoppers. We hop from Catholicism to Pentecostal to Islam and rarely make it to no religion. And the fastest religion in the United States today is uh, the Pentecostal and that's because all the Hispanics that are joining the, that, that church. And then you also are aware that there are many, many Latinos turning uh, into, into Islam and they are building new temples that are mainly being filled by Latinos. And that I find extremely dangerous because anytime that a person hops from religion to another religion, they become more fanatical as they move, you know, from, from Catholicism to Islam. And at the same time, you know, like I said, looking at the size of the Pentecostal church, it's difficult to visualize and to correlate what the Pew Hispanic Center is saying that Hispanics are le less religious today when we see that much of an increase in the uh, Pentecostal church. Some of the obstacles that um, Latinos face uh, when they, they, they want to become more secular are, are what, what I, I find are kind of our things that we need to work on, the things that we need to improve. Latinos were still afraid 
of the imaginary and challenging this imaginary God's order that was, that was instilled in us at the, at the, by the conquistadors in the colonial times. Now, of course, that's not an excuse. You know, it should change. You can't keep blaming 50 generations ago for what you are suffering today. But the lack of education in many, in many instances, the lack of equal opportunities, the lack of access to equal opportunities kind of perpetuates this lack of or unwillingness to challenge the status quo of religion within the Latino community. Our inability to name shame and isolate, it comp compels us to carry the, that unspoken order with, with us all the time. If we had, if we would talk about these things openly, perhaps there would be cooperation in trying to overcome them as opposed to pretend that they don't exist. You know, oh yeah, well, Latinos are religious. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, I, I, let's just move on. Let's not even talk about it. Let's not, let's not discuss. We don't want to fight. We don't talk about religion during dinner. We don't talk about politics during dinner. So how do you correct things that you never talk about? Um, we tend to accept other cultures as flawless because we expect the same lack of criticism when it comes to our, um, uh, to our um, uh, um, culture. So that's something that doesn't help things either. You know, culture is a word that is kind of given a sacred status sometimes. I'm very critical of cultures. I think if some cultures have some good aspects, and some cultures have good, as, good bad things that you shouldn't be silenced about. You know, if a culture or a religion encourages to have girls hymens cut, uh, hymens cut off, why would I remain silent about it? Why would I? Ex why should I exempt? culture or why should, why should I not criticize something like that because it's cultural or religious. We need to speak about the things that happen in other cultures that are no good. There is nothing wrong with saying that. I mean, you need to bring it out in the open so they can be corrected. Um, of course, what is good about a culture should be preserved and what is bad should be eliminated, of course. Um, no one likes being criticized. I don't like being criticized. I don't like being tall. I'm fat, I'm skinny, I'm tall, I'm short. You know, that's a normal thing. But if I'm never told things that, that I could improve, how am I going to improve them? So for me, that's what is so important that we need to go back, we, we go back to the table and we start discussing things as opposed to, you know, pretending that, they, that nothing is happening. Um, as humans, we, trend, we, we tend to stay away from criticism. That's a human thing. I mean, that's, that's normal. But, you know, I don't get up every day and I go like, oh, please criticize me. I love being criticized. You know, we all go through that. They, nobody likes it, but we have to do it. We have to tell what is wrong. Um, now, we have to, as a country, we have to make a concerted effort uh, with Hispanics so they become more secular. 56 million and growing. And do you want to be taken by do you want to be taken care of by witch doctors when you are old or do you want to be taking do you want professionals to take care of you? We need to make sure that they become more secular or at least more open to discuss things separate from religion. Some Latinos are very good at pretending that what is happening around them, if it does not affect them, they don't care. I was in Florida two weeks ago, and I was with uh, another person from Humphrey, so we approached these guys, these Cuban guys, and we asked, uh, we asked if we could talk to him about religion and you know, how, how they felt and things like that. And these guys were, we don't want to talk about religion. We don't talk about that. They told us in school they were stylists. They went to stylist school. They told us that we don't talk about that. Okay, 
because religion doesn't affect Latinos, because what is going on right now around them doesn't affect them. So that's, that's something that Latinos tend to do that should be changed. That, you know, it's not that you are attacking them, it's just that you are trying to figure out why is it. And when you start questioning, a lot of the time people start realizing that their opinions are wrong and they can change them, and sometimes they even change them. Um, we tend to live in our own uh, um, cultural bubble. You know, you always hear, oh, you know, I'm going to eat my food, I'm going to eat my, I'm going to uh, watch my TV program, I don't watch anything if it's not Univision. Why? You know, we are part of the, of the, this country, we need to be more open. So that's something that Latinos shouldn't, shouldn't be, shouldn't be allowed to get away with. It is okay to have your culture, it is okay to enjoy your stuff, but it, it is not okay if that's the only thing that you do 24-7. Um, some Latinos are very easy to convince. 30% voted for Trump, even after Trump told us how much he loved us. So, you know, I, I take that as a problem, as, a, as an understanding problem, as, 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 as an intelligent problem, as all kind of problems. I mean, if somebody comes and insults me and then says, go vote for me, and I go, yeah, sure. You know, I have a problem with that. Um, politics, Latinos in politics. Latinos have zero, no minus one, no minus two, zero political capital. Why? Because we spend most of our time carrying that heavy medallion that was instilled in our brains by the Spaniards, instead of saying, you know what? We spend so much energy carrying that around that if we had left it two centuries ago somewhere, we would have been much farther away. Um, we are still a very fragmented group here in the United States. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of us, uh, I shouldn't say us, I would exclude myself. You know, the first thing is like, what country are you from? I'm like, why? What difference does it make? I'm from the United States, and they get very upset with me, but that's my, my answer. Um, Latinos are still not being invited to be part of the political process, and that's why they, don't have zero, that they have zero uh, uh, political capital. Um, they are often called for diverse, uh, diverse, what I call diversity photo op opportunities, you know, like, you see the black, you see the Chinese, you see the Hispanic, and you go, picture time. That's diversity for me. I'm not interested in diversity. I want inclusion. I want to be part of the process. I want to be included in the process. Not pictures for me. Too late for that. Um, again, 30% of Latinos voted for Trump. That is serious, in my opinion. Well, secular Latinas. We are more visible than t 10 years ago, but we're still not visible enough. Um, we're still raising too many kids. And I propose to Latinas three options once they decide to start a family. One kid, more than one kid, and zero kid. Zero is an option. And no one, no your grandmother, no your mother, should come and tell you, Oh, you should have a couple, you should have a boy and a girl, just so the family is happy. Well, the family is not going to feed it. Forget it, okay? So I tell Latinas that careers in engineering, math, physics, STEM in general, are waiting for those who want to pursue them. There is nothing wrong with not being a, cos a, cos um, a cosmetologist or, you know, uh, I don't know, the, the typical things that Latinas tend to do because they are always having to take care of the million kids they have, which is something that I kind of don't, don't go along very well with. Um, I like La Vida Loca and Despacito, if you're familiar with those songs, don't get me wrong, okay? I do love them. But show business is not the only career for Latinos. You know, there are other things in life, come on. Um, and also, for those Latinos that are closeted atheists, come out, telling me that your grandma is going to suffer because you tell them the truth is just out of style. I'm sick and tired of listening to that. I just don't, mm, done and over with, too, long, too many times the same story. Using family as the excuse to live a lie, old story, 
You know, you need to come up with something new. Um, so the secular community, because we all have an investment or lack of investment or a responsibility in this problem. Atheists do not have a problem questioning religion, but when it comes to culture, some atheists shy away from criticizing cultures. Culture shouldn't be exempt. Um, one way to make them, the, the, the Latinos more secular, invite them to the conferences. Don't tell me that you don't know any Latinos that are atheists. You don't know? Call Humphrey. They have a list. You can have them there. You know, and every time I go and speak uh, uh, to, to a conference, I get one or two Latinos, but you know what? I'm hopeful that one day I will get five, and then I'll be happy. Um, we want professional taking care of us, not which doctors have said before, so that's what is so important that we, we try and we improve the, the, we decrease the religiosity among Latinos. Um, criticism of culture should, should exist even in the so famous safe spaces, okay? Um, all ideas can stand and should stand on their own, and if they cannot, then they're not so good ideas. Um, if, you are, if you are not Latino and you feel that I'm criticizing my culture a lot, well, too bad. I'm uniquely qualified to talk about it, you know. Now the positive, we're not all negative. You know, we have great music. We are loyal people. We are hardworking people. We are salsa dancers, not me, but most of them. We are astronauts. We are doctors, we are engineers, and many other trades. We are party animals, the majority. We are not rapists, we are not drug dealers, and we are good citizens. So when you think how you can um, help Lat the Latino community to become more secular, think about all the good things that we bring to the table. And, and, and again, you know, maybe a lot of some people might not like my approach to this because I'm a little bit blunt, but I believe that all personalities have a place at the table if you are trying to make change. Thank you. Some of you are probably good people. <laughs> <laughs> We are good. Go ahead. Nope, I'm not Puerto Rican. But you're married to David Tamayo. In my house, yes. Outside my house, I'm my own person. <laughs> <laughs> He's married to me. I'm not married to him. I'm very proud of you. I look up to you. And Eva Quinone sends you her love. Yes. Yes. You can say hi to her. Yes. So um, the role of Catholicism in the Hispanic community, uh, besides being a religious institution, also seems to be a cultural institution where many Hispanics growing up will, um, you know, cherish tr uh, Catholic traditions like mass or going to confession uh, or holidays like Lent. And so, for encouraging uh, the sort of uh, secularism in the uh, Hispanic community, um, how do you? Um, what are your thoughts on? Catholicism being replaced with secularism and the impact on culture and uh, those traditions that uh, many Hispanic families have. Okay, let me see if I understand. You are asking me if the impact that will have in the community when you, if you replace Catholicism with secularism, is that it? Yes. Well, I think when people, secularism will give you um, um, a, 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 a way to 
it will compel you to think based on evidence as opposed to in your imaginary friend. So when you are, um, when you are um, making decisions based on evidence, you make better decisions. And when you make better decisions, you become a better person, people around you become better persons, and by default, the community around you become a better person, and that maybe will end up earn, earning some more or more respect for Latinos, because you know, truly, for me, it's very difficult to come into a place, I'm not talking about this setting, but in other settings, at, 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 uh, you know, at, um, in meetings and stuff like that, and you know, it's like, where are your babies? How many kids do you have? Uh, is your husband a landscaper? Uh, none of that applies to me. So, you know, when, when you become more secular, you, your perspectives and your way of thinking changes, and people perceive that. But when you limit yourself and what religion does to anybody's brain, they li it limits the brain. It limits the knowledge and it limits everything. So it, it's a confining thing. So being secular, I think, will give Hispanics wings to fly higher. Go ahead. Uh, I really appreciate that you brought up the that, um, la uh, Latino Hispanics uh, convert into different uh, faith traditions, and I like that you pointed out um, the trend of the conversions of this to Islam. Just anecdotally, myself, I, I've noticed that. I, I don't know the social science um, polling data to show how many of that, um, to see if it's actually a trend. But um, because in, in Latin America, Islam has a very, very small presence. Um, and uh, by extension, many Latino Americans don't have a lot of interactions um, with Islam, yet many of them are converting. Just with your own research and observations yourself, um, have you identified like um, maybe some reasons for conversion into this religion? I can give you my opinion. I don't have statistics, statistics, statistics or hard evidence, but I think the main reason is that they are hoppers. That, you know, just to be on the on the soft side, and because I have a friend that he was Catholic, actually not a friend, an acquaintance, uh, very much Catholic. He married this girl from Egypt. He became this fanatic Muslim. Then he got divorced because the girl thought that he was too Muslim for her. <laughs> so then he started dating a Jewish girl. Guess what? He's Jewish now. You know, so is is the, is the idea of the imaginary friend. It doesn't matter where your imaginary friend comes from. And that's the problem. Cool. All right. That's actually all the time we have. So thank you very much, Hypatia. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs>